Hello, uh, my name's Alan from Rockmax. Uh, I want to talk to you today a little bit today about shark traces. Um, we sell these Ocean Predator traces. Um, this is a really high quality product that we make in-house. Um, all, all of it's made by the, the guys who, who work here. Uh, it's uh, got really high quality swivels on it. These are uh, AFW ball bearing swivels. They're, they're super strong. Um, we've never, never known anybody have a failure with, with these. Um, but what we find these days is a lot of people are very interested in making their own gear. Shark, shark fishing's got a lot more popular than it used to be. We find that um, if, if people are doing a lot of shark fishing, they're, they're, they're much happier to make their own stuff up. I mean, it does, does save money. Obviously, initially, there's a little bit of an investment in getting the right tools to do the job. Um, those will be a decent pair of crimping pliers. These are AFW ones. They have a, a sort of nice soft handle. If you're, if you're, doing a lot, if you're making a lot of traces up, um, this, this foam bit here just makes it easier on, on your hands. Uh, you need a decent pair of pliers for cutting the wire. The, these, we find these are best. Rather than having um, two, two flat surfaces that compress the wire, you've got uh, these that, that swivel around. As they swivel around, they compress the, the wire all around and cut it. So it stops the wire from splaying apart. Um, they're, they're a very good bit of kit. Um, as far as hard, hardware is concerned, uh, we have obviously the, the wire, the most important part of it. We, we recommend this AFW wire. It's made for fishing, not for other purposes. Uh, it's pre-tensioned, and um, so you know it, it doesn't mind being stretched. You know, if you're in a long long fight with a big fish, it's going to it's going to stretch the wire. Um, this is this is pre-stretched and it's made particularly for fishing. Um, we know people who've had a lot of problems trying to use cheap wire, cheap multi-strand wire that they've bought elsewhere, and um, it's let them down just when they you know they've been hooked to a very big fish. So I think the basic message here is that you want to go for the best quality kit that you can afford. Um, you know we we. we we don't spend, most of us spend a lot of time at work and not a lot of time fishing. So, you know, you hook that fish of a lifetime. You want to give your best, yourself the very best chance of landing it. Um, so that's why. Um, generally, uh, we, we recommend 400 or 480 pound AFW multi-strand wire for the bite trace. Um, and it's the bite trace that we're going to look at making today. Um, so on top of the wire, we also need some crimps so for this multi-strand wire we use uh, these double barrel crimps so um, the, the light, they're, they're kind of like a, a, a long figure of eight um, piece of brass as, as, you, as you crush them the center of the where, where the, the two sides of the eight meet that squeezes out compresses against the wire and locks the wire in, in place so these, these are a really super trustworthy way of actually getting your, your um, trace made so that there's no chance of the wire slipping. And finally, on the bike trace, you'll have a, a hook. Um, we, we recommend circle hooks now for all shark fishing. Um, the reason for that is we're going to be pushing the sharks back. So this, this circle hook will give the best chance of um, you being able to release the shark with the least amount of damage. This is a, this is a tournament circle hook from owner. So the tournament circle hook, the, the point of the hook points exactly at the shank of the hook. It's not offset at all. And what that's, that means is that um, there's very little chance of it actually, you know, if a fish swallows the bait, the hook will actually pull out through 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 the shark's mouth and as it turns away can you see that point of the hook is going to get lodged in the corner of, of the shark's mouth this is a very sharp sharp hook and that that fish that fish can't escape but also because it's hooked in the corner of the mouth it the fish isn't going to 
have some injury that's going to make it bleed so it will, it will go back in the water and soil away without too much harm. So let's just look at actually putting the trace together. Um, I'm going to start by attaching the hook. This is a five foot length of 400 pound AFW wire. Just going to first of all put the, the crimp on there. Um, this is then going to thread through the hook and twist it round. I'm just going to fold the wire in un underneath that, that loop so I can then push the eye of the hook through that with, with both pieces of uh, both of the piece of wire, wire as they go through the knot. Tighten that up, push that back through the loop a second time. I'm just going to make that, that loop a little bit smaller and then push it into the crimp like so. So, so the wire is now going through, through both the barrels on the crimp. This, this is called an offshore loop. Um, what this will do is when you pull hard on the bite trace, it's, the tendency is for this knot in the wire to tighten um, rather than put, and it spreads the load and stops you putting a lot of strain on the actual area where, where, where the crimp is holding the wire. So you get a much, much stronger link by doing that. One, one little thing to think about is when you're, crimp, you're using these double barrel crimps is try very hard to get the crimp to sit horizontally across the jaws of the pliers. So what, what that will do is uh, allow you to crimp, the, the, to compress the crimp evenly. Um, so the jaws of the pliers, there's a crimping pliers that have a series of um, round holes for the, the, the crimp to drop into. You have to just pick the right one for the size of the crimp that you're using. And when you, when you compress, you'll be compressing the crimp in round section. This, this gives you the best grip on the wire, and also um, it's, it, it, the whole crimp, crimping, crimps process looks much tidier. So I'm just, let me just uh, crimp this one together. I'm going because of the length of the crimp, I'm going to need to use two, two applications of pressure from the pliers. So that's the first one. So that is going to just. I, I, I do that right to the edge of the crimp so that uh, when, it, when it compresses it actually holds the wire that's coming out the tag end of the wire parallel to where the, the wire that's going in. And I'm going to just do a second one towards the back of the crimp and as I compress that I'm just going to leave that to splay out a little bit at the end, at the end of the crimp so, so that means that the, you're not um, where, where, where this part is moving about, that's, that's not putting any stress or strain on, on the wire. Um, people often ask if, if it's necessary to, to double or even treble crimp, but um, my, my uh, thoughts on that are, you know, you just do it once and you do it properly, make sure it's tidy. So, just to finish that off, we need to put a little section of this adhesive shrink tube on, slide that on, slide that down, that's going to fit neatly over that, push that down all, all the way. So I just need to heat that up. The best thing for doing this is uh, one of these wallpaper stripping, stripping heat guns. Don't want to do that for too long because otherwise you start to melt the um, shrink tube. You, you want it just to get to the stage where it's it's shrunk enough just to you can see the outline of the crimp inside inside of the shrink tube. And so you know that tag tag end of what of the wire that's very sharp that's 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 concealed and out out of the way. So that that's that's a that's a nice good strong join.
So on the other end of that, we just uh, I need just to put a length of this on again. Followed by a crimp. So this is 400 pound wire. So these are 1.6 millimeter crimps. So another shrink tube. Got a crimp on there. We make another offshore loop here. Just tighten that down. Hold that back. I want the loop to be small, but not not the. If you if you pull it, try and pull it too tight. It, the wire starts to separate. So I, I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to tuck that through. I can now crimp that. Again, just leaving that little bit at the edge, at the loop end, and that end go right to the edge of the crimp and compress it. So now put the shrink tube over the top of it. Like so, this is again. That's plenty. So that that is our complete bike trace. In the second part of this video, we'll be looking at making rubbing leaders. So I'm going to actually make a couple up for you. One, one will be with a waist and one will be without um, on how you put the swivels on. And then with, with that and the bite lead, you've got your complete sharp trace set up.